My name is Elizabeth Barnes. I'm a painter, printmaker, and educator. I have been, um, I, I was educated in the United States, which I'm from the United States. I have both a BFA and an MFA in studio arts. I taught full-time in Portland, Oregon for 10 years. Um, I was teaching both at Portland State University and Portland Community College, and moved to Vancouver five years ago with the intention of being a, changing from a full-time teacher and part-time artist to a full-time artist and part-time teacher. I'm finding more recently that I've shifted my intention or focus more to my understanding of the language of paint. I've always had a, an interest in science and technology. Um, a lot of the work that I'm showing in my studio for the Culture Crawl is actually work from three and four years ago where I was exploring fractal geometry. So I was creating drawings on the computer that I transferred to my panels and painted. Um, my more recent show is completely non-objective abstraction. I've really been revisiting the language of abstraction. In answer to the question as to how I use my studio, I use it predominantly to uh, make my own work. I'm now represented by three galleries in Canada. And, but I also teach monthly workshops out of my studio, which in fact, when I get my enrollment, pay my studio rent. It was a former mattress factory is what I understand. I think it's been artist studios for something like 20 years. I mean, I love my space. Look at this, I've got my 20 foot cathedral ceilings. For me, it's peaceful here. I like being in this community of artists. We have like 200 spaces here at uh, 1000 Parker Street. And so, and there's a, a nice diverse range of people. There there are amazing furniture makers and jewelers and woodworkers and gilders and painters and sculptors and you know people who do props for the films and so it, it's kind of nice having um, that community. We have a little coffee bar so people everybody knows everybody so you're not working in complete isolation. One of the things that doesn't work here is um, is uh, we have very limited power. So for me to actually have heat in this space and light my work at the same time is not a possibility. Um, <laughs> you're, you're talking about spaces. So that really doesn't work. Um, get right down to the grit. Um, the, the rents increase. Uh, we had a, a, a very substantial rent increase two years ago, and every year we get one. And I think all of us are struggling with kind of holding on to our space. So that the sort of pressure of knowing whether we can pay the rent is one thing that doesn't work. Right now, my rent's about $650 a month. It will probably go up the first of the year, which may not sound like a lot, but if you consider this is not my living space, this is Vancouver, so I'm also, you know, paying my bills for a living space on top of that. It's, that's, that's fairly, that's a big chunk of money for most artists. We negotiate with the building manager, um, but there's not any kind of organization or this isn't a collective or cooperative or anything like that. Most artists are so strapped for time, they're working two jobs, they're trying to produce their work, which takes an incredible amount of time and focus for artists to organize and go for funding and, and, and pull it together to build, you know, and get a cooperative going. It's just really, that's what we found when we just tried to organize an open studio event. People it, don't have extra time to commit to that. I don't know, that's not answering your question, like what could you do other than, you know, if there were interested people that could find themselves a funded maybe um, position where the government might offer some funding to somebody who would just do that or organizing within the arts. Because, I mean, I hate to say that, but I don't think artists have anything extra to, to give to that.